Ahoy! Shields in New World are a very interesting topic when it comes to the expansion and there will likely be some changes here. I already had a theory about this that we'll talk about here, but I'd also like to credit Mixologic for giving me another idea and showing me something that is also very interesting in that context. When the Hatchery and the Sandworm Trial were released, many of the items originally had very different stats on PTR. And one part of that was for example that the Hatchery gear didn't have any perks like Ward or Resilient, which kinda made them bad at the time. And I had the theory that that was likely because they were designed with the expansion in mind and the perks were meant to be for a smooth start into the expansion and not for the current version of the game. Now we have confirmation that Ward and Resilient will be removed, so once again that kind of indicates that this was in fact the plan, but then people were unhappy with this gear, so it actually ended up getting Ward anyways, so it will be less useful now, but they might also change the perks back in Season 3. But there was another item in this context that was weird, and that was the sword that dropped from the Sandworm. This weapon had some very nice damaging perks, I still think it's kind of unfortunate how much they nerfed those weapons in general, but what it also had was 31 strength. Now this is unusual in so far that the attributes on sword and shield are split, so this should have just been 16 strength. This is in itself a mistake that they made before, which was back at the winter event where we had a shield and a sword that both had too many stats, but they haven't made that mistake since, and now all of a sudden, right before the expansion, they make the same mistake again? That in itself was at least a little bit suspicious, but at the time we didn't have sufficient information to really piece things together. But now we have confirmation that the next weapon will be the flail, and the flail will come with the option to use it alongside a shield. And here we are getting to what Mixologic pointed out. When you use a sword and shield, the attribute points from your offhand weapon are still fully counted, so if you have a great axe with 31 strength for example, that is still always counted in your stats, even while you're holding your sword. If you're running a sword and a flail, then you're using the shield for both. And now you're running into a problem. Because if we take the current 625 gear score max, then the sword would have 16 points, the shield would have 16 points, and the flail would have 16 attribute points. So you'd end up with less attribute points than if you use any other weapon. That would obviously create balance problems and the solution here is very very simple. You move the attribute points purely to the weapon instead, which is exactly what happened with the sword from the sandworm already, so they kind of just were one step ahead there. But I do believe that the devs might possibly go further than this. A big problem with sword and shield balance has always been that you basically have to balance around those six perks between your weapon and your shield, which can be kind of weird with situations where, for example, you can run Bane on your weapon and your shield sometimes, but then there is no Bane for certain shield types and so on and so on. Now, Bane is gone, but obviously we have other similar combinations, illegal perk combos and all that kind of stuff that just complicate things between the sword and the shield. Adding the flail to the mix will make this even more complicated because now you need to somehow include perks that are useful for the flail as well, which may not necessarily work the same way as perks that are useful for the sword. For example, a round shield for a light setup mostly has damage focus perks in its perk pool, its craft pool. And that makes sense for a sword because you're kind of going for a DPS style build or for a burst build if you're going with a sword and you're going for light. But if you're going for a shield with a flail and a light loadout, you may actually be aiming to be a bit more of a healer and you maybe want utility, so you'd want completely different perks. Suddenly you'd want blessed or refreshing on your shield or maybe things would get even more janky and somehow Motherwell Wishes kind becomes best in slot because it has refreshing move, who knows. Anyways, my overall point here is that balance of shields with these perks would be extremely difficult. And I could imagine that they simply go away from that model entirely and shields are just shields and you have both your attributes and your perks entirely on your weapons. The downside is that this would mostly make shields a visual choice because there isn't really anything else on them and stat wise they would probably be the same otherwise and you just choose between the shield weight which would depend on your loadout. So I'm not sure if this is the way they'd be taking. There also is the confusing question that then would come up with the wall shield, which is the new shield, the artifact that actually has a unique effect, providing you with a better block and some elemental damage reduction. Then again, that could simply be a shield that only has this perk and counts as an artifact weapon, so you can't get an artifact sword or flail along with that and equip it. 
and then you would just have the rest of the attributes on your weapon, so in that case it would actually be fine. And since we're already in speculation territory, my dream would of course be that they remove shield weights entirely, so you can just use shields in loadouts without having to completely gimp yourself in other ways. Unfortunately, I can't see them doing that so far because I feel like they would have mentioned at least something about it by now. But on the less speculative side, Mixologic also pointed out something else that's very interesting. The flail tree actually includes the shield icon three times. Two of them are circled and the third one is already in use here uh, on the left side of the bastion tree. So what's very interesting here is you can see all three shields. You can see a round shield, you can see a kite shield and you can see a tower shield. As such, it seems very likely that the effect here differs depending on what kind of shield you are using. It's also interesting that they're involved in so many different skills, even in a cleric skill, which makes me wonder what that means for not using a shield. They have mentioned that you can use the flail without a shield, so the question is, would these perks have any effect at all if you don't have a shield, or are they exclusively for shield use, because that would be kind of annoying, I think, on the cleric side, since there's another perk locked below that. But this is particularly exciting for shield users and so far that we may finally be seeing a use case for the kite shield. That is, assuming any of these perks is actually useful for a kite shield. I'm definitely very excited to see what will happen with shields in the expansion. On Sunday, assuming we don't get a surprise PTR, I'll be posting my trading tips video for the expansion prep. If you'd like to see that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. If you want to get the trading tips early and you want to have a bit of a head start on everyone else, then consider supporting me on Patreon, where I've already posted those tips. Thanks to my patrons who already do exactly that. And thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.